Today I want to talk about posting accounts and unit accounts, as these are the only two kinds of accounts that you can actually post transactions to in the General Ledger module. So let's start by talking about posting accounts. So in the financial window under cards, we're going to go to account and open up an account window. Now let's pull up our operating account, our cash operating account, and let's talk about the specifics of this window. For starters, you'll notice there are three required fields, the account number, which makes sense, a description, which also makes sense, and the category. Now, you don't have to use the categories properly to work efficiently in GP, but there are some interesting things you can do with categories. Categories are a list of 48 predefined categories by GP. They're predefined by GP, but you can change the names. You could change the categories themselves, and you can also add to them. And you could do that under the General Ledger Setup window under Categories. But these categories can be beneficial. So you could pull up, for example, a trial balance for all your cash accounts. Or you could pull up an inquiry window for all your taxes payable accounts. So there's interesting things that you can do with it, including using uh, the category to populate rows in FRX. So there's, there's a lot of advantages to using categories. But let's talk about the other areas of the window. The first area I want to talk about is this allow account entry window. Now I recommend, by default, it'll be turned on so that you can actually use the account number to post to. But I like turning this off for my cash accounts that are set up in bank reconciliation, for accounts payable and accounts receivable. And the reason I like doing that is it reduces the probability or possibility that my sub-module will become out of balance to my general ledger, meaning that someone can't go into general ledger and code something directly to the accounts payable account number. That accounts payable will only get populated as a default entry from the payables module itself. So it reduces the probability of that. And if you have that unmarked and you try to post something directly to it, it's going to say um, that posting uh, account entry is not allowed for that account. Now, let's talk about the posting type down here, balance sheet or profit and loss. Now, on the surface, it looks like that might mean that you want it to appear on your balance sheet or you want it to appear on your profit and loss. But what it's actually asking us is, how do you want this account number to react when we close out the year in the general ledger? Meaning, if it's a balance sheet account, we want it to roll the balance forward into the new year. And if it's a profit and loss, we want it to close out the account zero it out for the new year and move the balance to retained earnings at the end of the previous year. So again, that's what it's really asking us. Not where do you want it to appear on financial statements, but how do you want it to react when we close the year out. Under that we have the typical balance, debit or credit. Now this gets a lot of people um, because this is really going to affect how you're working in, in other applications like FRX. And one of the accounts that always get people is accumulated depreciation, because typically the balance is a credit. But accumulated depreciation is an asset account, and assets have a debit balance. So if you populate it as a debit balance, then as a default account in FRX, it won't try to reverse the sign. So you might want to keep that in mind. So if you're having a problem with signs being reversed in FRX, you might want to come in and check the typical balance. And think about what kind of account it is and not the individual account and populate it that way and your life will be a lot easier building FRX reports. The next area I want to talk to you about is the level of posting from series. And you can predefine certain uh, levels of posting. For example, if this was accounts payable account number that we were looking at, you might want the accounts payable GL account to post in summary while everything else post in, de in detail. That is a way you can reduce the volume of transactions in your general ledger. Now I prefer for the general ledger to have as much detail as possible even if it makes it longer because there's a lot more information to be uh, obtained in reports. That's just a bull into preference. And then we have this include and lookup field. Now let me pull up another account number and I'll show you how this works. Let's pull up the sales pantry account number. And you notice I only have it set to display in the sales module or the sales series, not in the purchasing series. And I can use regular window control features, holding down the control key to select multiple objects, or I can unselect the options. So I'm going to unselect so that it's only available then in the financial series, just this 35650. And let's see how it reacts when we do that. 
I'm going to pull in a payables transaction. I'm going to go to the distribution window and I'll click on the lookup button. And I'm already sorted by main segment. And you'll notice that 356.50 is missing from the list. And that's because I said by default I do not want it to appear in the list. I want to reduce the account numbers that can be used in this lookup. Now I still have the ability to go back and choose all accounts and I can then see it, but by default I can shorten my list up. So that's a pretty powerful feature. Now let's look at unit accounts. And again under financial cards we'll choose unit accounts. And unit account is where we store non-financial transactions, in this case employee account. So we have a, an account number where we're accounting employees. Now you can either choose to enter the total number of employees for each month or you can have the balances roll so that you're only showing when you increase or decrease employee counts. And it's just a number. There's no debits equal credits here. So if you want to increase, you debit. And if you want to decrease, you credit. Again, we have the series that you can put in um, to have it in, show up in the lookup list. And you could even perform budgets. Now, my favorite thing about unit accounts is putting them on financial statements. So you can actually, if you have employee count, if you have a total employee count list, you can actually print a financial statement, a P&L statement, that averages out per employee. So you can see for each number, for, by the average of all the employees you have, how much money you're making. And we'll look at how to use uh, unit accounts on FRX in a future blog. So let's do a transaction uh, on unit accounts. So I'm going to come in and just type in test. And I'm going to key in to one of these employee accounts. Let's say um, I'm keying in each month how many employees I have. This month I have 35 employees and I tab. Now one of the things you're going to notice that's different, even though I'm using the regular general ledger entry screen, is that my totals are empty. And again that's because debits do not need to equal credits. And I can simply post now. And if I realize in hindsight there were only 34 employees, I could just come in and enter a credit for one and the net will be 34 employees. And that's how unit accounts work. And again in a future blog we will re review how to use unit accounts in FRX so you can perform some interesting transactions. Hope this helps. Thanks.